Hey friends, I'm so excited you're here because I have a mega Dollar Tree DIY video that you're not gonna wanna miss from my previous projects. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Hitting me here, keep in mind you guys, this might not make a ton of sense because I did take a bunch of different videos and put them all in one video for you guys. So I just wanted to start by saying that. So with that being said, I'm super excited because I forgot about some of these projects. So let me know in the comments what you guys liked, what you loved, what you didn't care for, and what you guys want to see in the future. Let's jump in. Okay, friends, let's kick this thing off with this first DIY that's so easy you could probably do this in your sleep. All I did was take a 14 inch hoop wreath from Dollar Tree or ring, whatever you like to call it. And then I also had this eucalyptus from Dollar General. It was $3 a bundle, I believe. And all I had was just one bundle and maybe like one piece from a different bundle. So all I did was clip off that greenery. And then instead of gluing this, I decided to try to use this wire from Dollar Tree. Now, it's not the easiest to work with. I found the easiest way to do it was to lay down your piece, wrap the bottom of the stem, and then as you're getting to the end of that stem, then add another piece and start wrapping that piece. Um, and it worked out fine for me. I wish I had more greenery, but this was all that I had um, on hand at the moment. So it's okay. I made it work no big deal but once I got the first side done then I did the exact same thing to the second side and you want to make sure that you start at the top and work your way down or else your wire will not wrap right <laughs> and then for the middle I just took two pieces that I had glued them together going in opposite directions and then glued that right down into the middle to make the wreath look more cohesive now in the original wreath it did not have a bow but I just felt like mine was missing something so I did add this little bow from Dollar Tree and I simply just made a finger bow if you need a tutorial I'll leave that in the cards in the right hand corner and then I just glued that down with some hot glue and literally you guys it was that easy it only cost me $4.25 so let me know down in the comments what you think of my version Now this was another super simple project. This one took a little bit of patience as well. So to start off, I took one of these wood rounds from Dollar Tree and then I just kind of free handed a handle out of it. Next, I took a very sharp utility knife and I, this is a box cutter utility knife, whatever you wanna call it. And I started by cutting the front or scoring it, if you will, right along where I marked it and then eventually I could see through the back where I was cutting so I just flipped it around and followed that line around and then the corners is the trickiest part which it really wasn't that bad but all in all that was the trickiest part of this um, so the corners you just kind of want to um, almost chop it that way you can kind of see through the back where you are cutting and then through the back you can kind of work that through once you're done then you're just going to pop it through it sounds and looks a lot harder than it is this is super cheap wood if i had thicker wood i'd be using a jigsaw or something of that nature but because this wood is so thin i did just go ahead and use my knife and then once that was cut out, then I sanded down the edges and I filled in those holes with my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. 
Now this next part, you guys, I figured that this would not work, but you never know unless you try. Um, I think the only reason this didn't work is because this wood from Dollar Tree is so thin that it just seeps right through it if you're using something like I'm using. So all I did was tape it off and then sand down the excess lightweight spackling. And then I took my two stains of choice stains of choice mix those up really well before using them and then I started with my darker color which was Kona and I just kind of tested it on a popsicle stick to make sure that I liked those colors and then when I was satisfied I went in with the darker color first now looking back I probably should have just stained this all the lighter color and then went in with the darker color and I do not think that it would have bled that way so definitely try that first before you try to painters tape stain on thin wood <laughs> it sounds funny now that I'm saying it like girl why did you even try that but you live and you learn right anyway once I was done with that little side with the darker stain then I went in with my lighter stain and just stained that part i also took these half circle wood beads and i stained those as well with the lighter One stain i'll have to get later. that um name of the stain for you and i will leave it in the description box um, but I also stained that and then I went in one more time with the darker stain just to make sure that I had a good contrast. Now once that was finally dry the very next day, then I went in with some painter's tape and I just created a stripe down that part. That way it could cover up the imperfections, which I actually really didn't mind the way that it seeped that way, but I did just want to make this look better. So I just put a, a white line down the middle so you couldn't tell now once again this is cheap wood so that little tiny edge did kind of break on me a little bit so I just reinforced that with a piece of popsicle stick and then I added my feet which I wish I wouldn't have done it was lopsided or I wish I would have just did it with three but hey no big deal I still absolutely love the way that it turned out and I know you'll let me know down in the comments what you think as well Okay, friends, I could not wait to make this. Now, unfortunately, mine didn't come out the exact same shape, which is totally fine. Um, when I do dupes or anything like that, I don't try to go for perfection. I just try to go as close as I possibly can, and I think I did a pretty good job. I know you guys will let me know. But I start off with five of these frames from Dollar Tree. They are the black, I don't know what size they are, but they have the jute hanging with the little clips for pictures. Um, so I just open all of those up, take the backing and the jute out, and then I take out the um, backing holders, the little metal pieces with my needle nose pliers. Now, had I did this over again, I would have covered this part with wood. So do as I say, not as I do. Use popsicle sticks stir sticks, a piece of wood from Dollar Tree, anything other than gluing two of the backs together and putting that down and calling it a day. Um, I thought it would work. I thought that these were thick enough, which in the end they were, but I just wish that they were a little more, a little more sturdier. So to reinforce this a little bit all I did was take a stir stick I cut the end off so that it would fit and then I just adjusted it in the middle to give it a little bit of support next I just go around the edges once again re reinforcing that with some hot glue and now we're going to move on to the assembly part I just take another frame and I glue down the side of it and then glue it down to the side repeating that on the second side 
I then take a square dowel from my stash. You can find the square dowels that I use in my Amazon store linked in the description box below. But I just hold that up to the edges and mark it. And then I go in with my mini miter saw and I cut that. I get lots and lots of questions about my mini miter saw. That too is also linked in my Amazon store so you can check that out. But I just cut that down and then put that down on either side for support and then I repeat that step for the top part to glue that together. I also want to mention these frames from Dollar Tree, I don't know if they put wax on them. I, I don't know what is on these frames but I do recommend using a more heavy glue like super glue, um, Anything heavier than hot glue, I definitely recommend to use that is a quick hold, but that um, is going to last because if, as you can see here, some of the parts on my project was just coming right up and I could tell that these frames were like waxy almost. So anyway, I did just want to mention that it all worked out in the end because I did end up going in with some super glue. Um, but all in all, no big deal. I did just want to mention that. Once I had those pieces cut, then obviously I glue them down with some hot glue and then I attach the top pieces. Now, of course, this is out of frame. You're going to have to bear with me. I'm getting used to filming again in my shed, but I did just take a smaller dowel. I cut that down to size and I glued that down on each either side of it just to have something to glue my frame to and then I glued that down and I forgot to glue the top so we're going to do that here in a minute but next I just take these skewers from Dollar Tree they are the longer thicker skewers so if you pick up a pack just know um, if it's not the real long ones that are thicker than regular skewer skewers um, then those are not the ones that I used. I don't know if the skinny ones will work. They might. You can try it. But anyway, I just measure these down, or I measure these. I cut them down to size, and then I glue them down two on the shorter sides, and then three on the longer sides. Here is where I realized that I never glued the top of it. So all I did was just run a bead of hot glue down the middle and then I took one of those skewers as well, measured it quickly and then I put that down into the hot glue. That way it kind of finished it and you couldn't see that ugly hot glue seam if you will. And then I just continued to cut and glue down my side pieces. Next, I go in with another piece, I measure that down, and I glue those down for the cross pieces going all the way around. Once I was done with that, then I repeated those steps for my roof pieces. And here is where I'm about to show you that the hot glue was just not cooperating with me. And I like to leave these in because it's okay to make mistakes, you guys. It's okay to get frustrated with your project and want to literally throw the entire thing across the room. This is where I was at with this project. I promise you, I was texting my friend saying, girl, I'm about to throw this entire thing across the room. And... I just had to bring it back to center, push the negative thoughts out, and just put one foot in front of the other and say, you know what, I've come this far, I am not gonna give up now. So all I did was to just take some hot glue, or take some um, 
super glue and I just went across all the seams, all the pieces that were glued and I glued those together. Last but not least, I spray painted it black and look how amazing it turned out through all the trials and tribulations. We did it, you guys. I absolutely love it so much. Even though it gave me a headache, it was totally worth the hassle. As always, don't forget to let me know down in the comments what you think of this project and which project at the end is your favorite. Okay friends, moving on to the second to last project. Now this one is also super simple. All I did was take two bunches of ferns from Dollar Tree. I took the wire wreaths or hoops, whatever you wanna call them. I ended up spray painting two of them because I was gonna make two wreaths, but I ultimately just decided to do the bigger one. So I'm just showing you here that you can use hot glue. It's totally possible. It just takes a little bit more time and patience. So all I did was kind of separate all of the picks from the bunch. I cut those off and then I just started by gluing them down in one direction, kind of layering them if you will. And then I always like to do a few and then start on the other side. That way I can make sure that it's nice and even. And then you're gonna see my trick here in the middle to join these together. So once I got to the middle, all I did was take a piece on the end I took the next branch off of it, if you will, and kind of pushed it into a V, and then I pushed the branch down going the opposite way. That way, I could cut off the excess wire and then glue it down into the middle, and it just kind of gives it that more natural finished look. And literally, you guys, that was it for this project. I cannot believe they are actually charging $15 for that when you can make it in about 10 minutes and only spend just a couple dollars. So let me know if I got pretty close with this one. I wasn't too sure with the first wreath. Um, I thought the hearth and hand was a little fuller, but this one, I feel that I got on point. Okay friends, last but not least project. This is probably one of my favorites. Um, I can never decide. But again, this one came with a few hiccups. No big deal. So I take these two pieces of wood from Dollar Tree and I start off by taking my square and just kind of doing like a rooftop, if you will. And then I realized that the first one that I marked was gonna be a little bit too long. So I kind of measure the side of the piece because I'm also gonna use this wood for the entire box, the bottom and the sides. So I measured that down and then cut my pieces. And you're gonna see here in a minute, after I sanded down the edges really good, because on the original Caddy, the edges are nice and rounded. So I wanted to get mine as close as possible. But you're going to see here in a minute, this was not cut right. I should have made my pitches a lot taller, and I didn't, so we just have to improvise. So <laughs> that was the moment where I'm like, oh God, this ain't going to work. This is way too big. But here I am, being me, not having time to fix it. So I'm like, okay, we're going to make this work, girl. Like, we're going to make this work. Watch me. I waste the glue. I put the side up. And you can see me like, wait a minute. 
what is going on here? Something is not right. I then again proceed to put it together. And then my OCD is like, nope, ain't happening. You can see I also grabbed the paper towel and still tried to put the side up. Yeah, no. It was just not, it did not look right. So what I did was wipe off the um, wood glue and then I took one of those pieces marked right down the middle and then I cut that down the middle and I also just trimmed down the sides of my house. Yeah, yeah, I called it a house, I know. It's the side of the caddy. I know somebody will come in the comments, you call it a house, it's a caddy. <laughs> anyway, y'all, so I cut down the side of the caddy, and then once again, we're going to wood glue. I had some trouble getting it out, so all I did was take the excess of one of those skewers we used earlier, and I just kind of put the hot yeah the hot glue the wood glue all the way around the edges and if you guys don't have this gorilla wood glue that's the heavy duty definitely get you some I'm not sure what is in it that makes it better you have a lot more play time with moving your pieces and not only that but this wood glue is so thick that your pieces stick together with no problem so I just take my wood glue and I glue all of my pieces to my box together and then I let that dry. Next, I take this round dowel that I believe I got from Walmart a while back for like a dollar. I just measure that for the top and then cut that down with my miter shears. And then I sanded all the way around, just removing the any excess wood glue that I could see. I then just stirred up my stain and I stained my dowel and then set that aside. Now, because stain is oil-based, you definitely want to let it air dry, let it sit, cure, whatever you'd like to call it before you use your project or you use that piece because it will get all over your fingers and it just makes a big mess. So I like to stain it, wipe off the excess, and then if it's a nice day, set it outside, um, something like that while I'm working on the rest of my project. Now for the sides of this, um, the one by Joanna Gaines was like raised. So the easiest way I found to do that was take these really tiny wooden dowels that I got in a pack I believe from Walmart as well and I just kind of eyeballed it um, there was no particular size I just kind of left a little bit of room at the edge at the ends and then I took another piece and kind of measured that to make a rectangle once all of my pieces were cut and I sanded them down smooth then I went in and I glued my pieces together before I glued it to my box. That way I could make sure that it was nice and straight um, before I glue it and I have to move it around and it's a big old mess. So I don't know, hindsight is 2020. If I was doing this again, I would probably have just glued it right onto the box but of course my name's Melissa and things become more popular <laughs> things become more complicated than they need to be sometimes but that's okay no big deal um once that was dry then I painted some more wood glue on the back of it glued that down to my piece and set some heavy uh bottles on top of it so that it would glue down nicely once that was complete drying and I made sure that that decorative piece didn't go anywhere, I then went in with my Moss Waverly chalk paint and I gave that a really nice coat. Now because Waverly chalk paint, especially after it's been sitting for a while, is pretty thick, I only had to do one coat, but you might need to do two. 
as you can see, I place the dowel rod in between the top pieces. And then to screw this together, now I did not end up screwing it together because I didn't like the way that it looked. But I was just showing you that you have to um, drill out the hole first and then screw it together if that's what you want to do. But again, I liked mine without it. And then literally, you guys, that was it. Look how gorgeous this turned out. Mine was so easy to make even though it came with some hiccups once again I was determined to put this together and make a gorgeous project so if you just put your mind to something you can do anything our minds are such powerful tools and a lot of times we just don't use them in the right way friends so we're gonna start off with the little barn doors I take these galvanized metal decor pieces from Dollar Tree and I just start by taking off the jute hanger and then I go in with a small screwdriver. I believe I got this little set from Walmart for fairly inexpensive and I just remove the screws from the back. That is what is holding the little decor pieces off on in the front so I just remove the screws I always save little tiny screws like this because I can use them on so many different things so it's up to you if you want to save them but I'm pretty sure many of you are like me and you save everything so then I got a little bit smarter and I was like okay well I think I have a drill bit that will fit these tiny ones and I did so I did just use my drill for the rest of them Next, I take a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree as well, and I just kind of lay my pieces out. Now, you guys, I tried to go back to my Dollar Tree and get four more of these galvanized signs because I did want these to be a little bit longer, but I couldn't find them, so I just had to go with it. If you guys can find more, I looked online. They're not there either, so hopefully you guys have some of these i'm the type of person when i see something i grab a bunch of them because i know i probably won't see them again and i lay my galvanized pieces out and then measure i mark it with my pencil and then i cut that out with a knife next i glue my pieces down to this foam board and i forgot to mention that i did cut two pieces the exact same of the foam core board so at first i started gluing the galvanized piece and then laying it on to the foam board but i quickly realized that with metal or glass anything like that your hot glue dries really really quick i guess because it's so cold so i did end up start just i did start uh, gluing straight to the foam board rather than on the metal pieces and then to the board and I found that they held much better this way. I do repeat this step all the way down and I do alternate my pieces that way they fit together really nicely. I just found that they laid more flat that way and you couldn't really tell other than a few places that it was just one whole piece or that it was individual pieces. <laughs> Next, I go in with my lightweight spackling because these have holes where the little sign was hanging as well as the jute hanger. I didn't want those holes showing, so I did just fill them in and then I went over the whole went over the lightweight spackling with my Arteza silver acrylic paint. Next, I take these little pieces that I got from Home Depot. Usually I use yardsticks, but you guys, these are called poplar and they're only like a dollar and some change. They're very lightweight and they're already sanded down. I don't like to use the belt sander. It just freaks me out. I don't know why. So if my husband isn't home, I have to wait for him to get there and all that. So I figured I would just pick these up. Like I said, they're cheap. And that way if he's not there then I can just use them instead because on the yardsticks the numbers are kind of printed on or like pressed into it so if I don't sand it then I can see the numbers and my OCD goes a little nuts with that but anyway I measured out the frame and then I use large stir sticks 
to measure a middle piece for the door and then the top and the bottom like slanted pieces for the barn door. I just lay them out and I take my pencil and literally just draw where I need to cut. Once I have all my pieces cut, then I do go in with my Kona stain that I got from Walmart. I like to use this because it dries really, really quickly. Any other stain that I use that's just regular stain that isn't water-based takes forever to dry, but because this has polyurethane in it, it dries really quickly. I then just glue my pieces down starting with the bottom and then I just reinforce that with some Jenga pieces in the back and then I continue around the entire piece gluing all the pieces down. Once I had all my pieces glued down then I take my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush and I just distress around all the edges all the wood pieces. Now I know that this is a personal preference. I know that distressing is not all of your favorite. So if you don't like the distressing, you don't have to do it. But for me personally, I do love distressing. So that is why I distressed my piece. So I thought that I had a clip of the next part, but I don't. All I did was take a handle from Home Depot, two handles, and I screwed them in. I had very small screws so that they wouldn't go all the way through. I distressed the handles as well. And then look at these, you guys. I am so excited with the way they turned out. I do wish they were a little bit longer, but they will do. I love them so much. And I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Okay friends, so moving on to the bigger middle wall hanging. Now I take those same exact poplar sticks. I believe they are four feet long and I originally cut my pieces down 36 or 32 inches but I quickly realized that that was just too big for me so I did cut them down to 25 and then the pieces where the side pieces met you just have to measure because you want this square so you want to cut them a little bit shorter but just measure them all together and then you'll cut wherever it ends up being 25 inches. I stained the pieces and then I glued them in the back with some large popsicle sticks. Once it was dry, then I did lay it on my floor because like I said, this was a really big piece and I take my square dowels and I just lay them out in a V and then mark where I need to cut. I go to my little mini miter saw and I just cut down those pieces, but I quickly realized that it was much easier to use my miter shears they're handheld and I can easily just, um, you know, get the angles that I need and then it literally cuts through these like butter. Next, I leave the that first V in place and then I lay out another square dowel. I mark where that needs to be cut and then in the middle, I mark that as well and cut those down. This was really simple to put together and I'm so excited with the way it turned out. I kind of wish that I would have used my bigger dowels, but hey, next time I'll know. I then just sand down the edges and then I stain those as well with my Kona stain. Now last week I got this, ama this amazing floral from Walmart. You guys, I love their floral. It's so bushy and cheap. These were both 97 cents a piece. One is a boxwood, and I forget the other one, but I did show a picture of the uh, label in case you guys want to try to find them. They're really beautiful for spring, but I just kind of pulled them off of the pick, and I cut the boxwood down, and then I just put those in a wreath from Dollar Tree. This has jute holding together the wreath, so I just kind of slid the boxwood pieces around the wreath through those and then for the flower ones I believe these are called hop clover but don't quote me on that so for these I did end up just gluing them in because I couldn't slide them through 
I made the wreath pretty bushy so I did just glue those in pretty close together and I do go all in one direction some people don't like that but me personally I like when they go all in one direction and then I take a big N from Walmart and I paint it white and then distress it with some antique wax I also distress it with this green by Waverly chalk paint I believe it's called moss and then after that was all said and done then I did end up going in with some black just to make it stand out even more next I take it to my other part of my floor in my shed where there is no carpet and I glue the X pieces on I then take the end and I glue that down to my wreath. I just put a little dab of hot glue in each corner and then lay that down. Now once I glued this down, I wanted the greenery to look like it was kind of growing over that end. So I did just pull the flowers and the greenery up over the sides just so that way, like I said, it looked like it was growing over it. And I love the way this look, but if you don't like that look, then you can just leave your letter right on top of it. It's totally up to you. I then just wanted to reinforce these X pieces, so I flipped it over and took some hot glue. Now I use Gorilla Hot Glue because it literally holds so many things and it holds really nicely. So I did just reinforce where all the wood pieces met. Now I usually distress with a chip brush, but I saw this technique on Facebook and basically you just take a sponge from Dollar Tree cut in fours, some antique or Waverly white paint as well as Waverly wax, and then you just kind of dip it in both, dab off the excess and then distress that way. And I am so impressed with the results and I actually really love this technique. I then just glued the wreath to the middle and then that was it you guys. This project was really quick, easy, and cheap and I absolutely love the way it turned out. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Each week I love to thank my coffee supporters. So thank you Liz, two times anonymous, Kat and Donna for buying me a coffee. If you enjoy my work and would like to buy me a coffee, you can find the link in the description box or go to buymeacoffee.com slash all things crafty. Moving on to our last project, which I think might be my favorite, but per usual, I can never choose. I did just go on my computer and print out fresh flower. Originally, I was going to do market, but it wasn't going to fit with the wording that I put at the bottom. And I just went, I'll leave all the information. I would leave you guys a free printable, but it would literally be like 10 links because this was so big and so many different pages. So literally all I did was go on my computer, type it out and print it out. So I will leave the size and the font. I just take two signs from Dollar Tree, the longer ones. I take off all the embellishments and hangers. And then I do just peel that paper off that was the design and I glue it together with some popsicle sticks and then I fill in the cracks with my lightweight spackling. Next I go in with my mini finger sander which is linked in my Amazon store in the description box as well and I just sand down those edges and then I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and give it a distressed coat of paint. Next, I take my Arteza graphite paper and I just transfer on my wording and then once I am done transferring it on with the graphite paper, then I do go in with my Arteza black paint pen and I go over all that wording. Next, I was not sure what I was going to put on the side of these, you guys, but I did have these spring 
uh, chalk transfers from Chalk Couture. I will also leave a link for everything that I used as far as Chalk Couture in the description box as well. Anything that I use that you're wondering where I get, chances are you will find it in the description box. So I chose to do this eucalyptus piece. I did use this in my previous video a few videos back and I just love the way this eucalyptus looks. So I did use two types of green at uh, two types of green and I kind of mixed it. I like the way that this looks, but if you don't like the two-tone look then you can just do a solid color and I just kind of place them down I dried in between the next part and then I just kind of made like a swag on each side once I had that done then there was this little um, piece that kind of looked like little pieces of greenery and I did go in with my shimmer olive and I transferred those on just to make it look a bit more full once I had those done, then I go in with, I, I believe this is like a rose, and it is a two-toned transfer. I love that about Chalk Couture is they give you pieces so that it, you can have dimension, but I did want this to be neutral, so I used very neutral colors. So I did the first part with like a tan color, and then I went in with the rose part with black. Next, I'm going to transfer on a peony, and I did go in with peachy keen and some white in a little dish that I got from Dollar Tree, and I didn't want this to be as bright as the peachy keen, so I did just mix it. You can mix your paste, it's totally fine, and get the color that you desire, and as soon as I got the color that I wanted, then I transferred on that peony on either side of the roses. Now, I did tone it down way too much. It was almost white and you could barely see it. So I did just go back in and add more of that peachy keen. And I got this really beautiful pale pink color. And I am so excited with the way that it turned out. So I did just go over that first one with the darker color that I made. I did the exact same thing on the other side, except I only had to do one coat since I didn't transfer on the lighter color yet. Now, when I stood back and looked at this, um, I couldn't really see the little details of the peony, so I did just go in with some black acrylic paint and a very tiny brush, and I just kind of highlighted the edges and the details on the inside of the flower. So this sign is absolutely beautiful as is, but if you've been around, then you guys know that I'm extra. So I did just go in with a tiny brush again and some white Waverly really chalk paint. And I just put a line on the outer edge of the letters just to give it some dimension and make it look more professional and finished and high end and you guys I love the way that it looks with these lines I was really nervous to mess it up but I'm so glad that I just went with it because the way it turned out it looks so nice Next, I measure out the frame. Now, obviously, you can't put the frame directly on the sign, and I've never done a frame on the outer edge of the signs before, so I was really excited to try this. So I just take some more of my square dowels. Now, you have to get the 48 inch, which is four feet, and it fit this sign perfectly on the top and bottom so I didn't have to cut the top and bottom pieces but for the side pieces I just laid them out measured and then cut those down as well once again I stained them with my Kona stain and then while that was drying I took my distressing ink that I got from Amazon it is in my Amazon store as well in the description box and my blending brush and I just randomly go around the edges and in the middle just to make this look old and weathered and kind of antique -y. I just love the way that that like kind of antiquing looks again if that's not up your alley then you don't have to do that 
Originally, I was going to distress it with antique wax, but once I was done with the distressing ink, I loved the way that it looked and I didn't want to mess with it any further. But originally, I tried to uh, glue the frame down just by putting a bead of hot glue on the top, but I quickly realized that that was not going to work. So over the weekend, I picked up this magical tape. It's called Alien Tape and it's supposed to hold a bunch of stuff so I did just put a B I did just put a piece good lord here we go I did just put a piece on each of the dowel rods in the back and then I reinforced the other edges with some hot glue and it did hold together really beautifully so I was definitely excited about that my husband said that I should have let him cut little divots into my dowels on his table saw but honestly by this point I was just ready to be done so I did go with the tape and the glue and then I distressed the dowels with some white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush look how amazing this sign is you guys I think this is my first runner up for my favorite project this week but like I said before, I can never choose a favorite, but I know you'll let me know in the comments which is your favorite. Dupe number one. Theirs was a whopping $199 and I could not believe that it was this expensive because I knew that I could make it much cheaper. So to start off, I take three of these Happy Easter signs from Dollar Tree and I just clip off the handles and then the Happy Easter part is just like a paper backing I guess I guess it's not really a backing but it's just paper so they're always uneven and I just took my large sanding sponge and I just sanded off those edges that were kind of hanging off I then vacuumed up my desk and I took this gorilla mounting putty and I put two dots or globs whatever you want to call it on either side of my quilting ruler because when we do this next step it is going to make sure that our quilting ruler doesn't slide but I just take my ruler um, that I got from Dollar Tree and I mark out the middle all the way down the sign so I put one mark at the top one mark in the middle and one mark at the bottom and then I always measure these signs because they're never square and because it wasn't square I marked where it was uneven all the way down and then I just cut that little edge off next I take my quilting roller and I um, lay it down and then I run my utility knife along that edge a few times and then I just take that off. Next, I once again, basically we're scoring this line and then I go right next to that line, v pretty close but not close and like not very close if that makes sense. And I also make another score line that way um, this kind of looks like faux wood and then once I have them scored then I just run my knife along that middle edge and it just pulls up the top layer I then take my stylus and I just kind of scratch in between there again this is just going to make it look like wood and give it this really nice effect that you're not going to be able to tell that this is just a Dollar Tree sign if that makes any sense whatsoever so once I had all three of those uh boards scored or the line down the middle whatever you would like to call it I take some large popsicle sticks and I glue those right down the seams to put this all together to make one big sign next I take my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree I fill in those holes and then I just take my knife along the sides of the signs that I had butt together to make one big sign because they were glued together so closely I wanted all of this to look cohesive so I didn't want those to look too close together whereas the lines that we scored were too far apart if that makes sense I then just gave it a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint and I take my 
pieces of poplar and I just measure out a frame for this. Now the way that I do this, I lay one piece down, mark it on one side, I then lay a piece down on the other side and mark it on the actual sign. That way I can cut down the middle pieces perfectly. Once I had those pieces cut down and I clamped them into place, I then took a scrap piece of poplar, laid it down the middle like we're going to create an X. I marked those angle cuts and then once I had those cut, then I lay the cross piece and lay another scrap piece on top of the cross piece. That way I can evenly cut the middle of this as well again if that makes any sense and then I also marked the corner angles once again. Now I use a big saw to cut my pieces but you can find miter boxes for fairly cheap at Home Depot, Walmart, any place like that. Um, you can definitely cut these down very easily with a miter box but I'm lazy and I like it the easiest way possible so it's definitely worth it to invest in a bigger saw but like I said a miter box a miter box is just, it works just as fine. I then like to label my pieces as well as on the board. That way they can go right back exactly where I had them and cut them down perfectly to fit. So, and I also label the back of the pieces so I just like started at the top and did one, two, three, four for the um, frame and then for the cross pieces I just kind of made a little diagram in the middle for myself again so that way this fits together seamlessly once we go to glue it all together. I then stained my pieces with I believe it was American walnut or no it's special walnut sorry about that um, I stain my pieces with special walnut and then I just lay them out wherever the diagram told me to just to once again make sure that they all fit together I like to do this before I glue anything because if you just start gluing without like putting it back together you're gonna run into some issues so once I had it laid out perfectly then I do just go in with some hot glue and I glue these pieces down. Once I had my pieces glued down then I do just take some green painters tape and I just pull off eight pieces. I clip the ends straight. Why? I don't really know because in the end it doesn't really matter. But um, I start by just laying them out where I think would look right. And then I measure each side to make sure that they are nice and even. Now I think this probably would have worked out better if your sign is square, which my, my sign was not square, which in the end it looks okay. I don't really know if I like it very much you guys can let me know in the comments down below what you think but like I said I believe if this sign was square then it would have looked much better but again I start by just laying out um, my tape in two lines on each side of the sign so there's four sides um, and then once I had all eight of those pieces laid down then I do go in with eight more cross pieces and you're going to make kind of like a V on the ends of these lines. If this is making no sense, you can see what I'm doing here. Um, but once I had all of that taped out, then I do go in with my ink Waverly chalk paint and give it two good coats. Next, I pull back that tape and I reveal these beautiful crisp lines. This is my favorite part, you guys. I think that's why I love chalk couture so much because when you pull that transfer back and you see those crisp images, it's it's just so satisfying. If you guys have tried chalk couture and that's your favorite part as well, let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't tried it, let me know as well. So once I pull that tape back, then I just kind of follow those lines on the side of the poplar pieces just so that way I could paint over them so that um, this kind of looks like it's stamped onto the middle of this piece. And 
at first I was like unsure of this you guys so this is supposed to look kind of like a quilter's star I believe it's called but I do know that this pattern is really big in kind of like the primitive farmhouse. Um, so I did want to try something a little bit different yet again. There's a lot of changes coming to this channel. And I am going to start stepping outside the box. I have a fun challenge coming. So I can't wait for you guys to see what that is. I do um, announce that in this video. Um, but once I had the top portion marked out and taped off then I do go ahead and paint that as well and then once I pull back that tape then I take a very tiny brush and I just connect the lines on the side of the poplar now once this was done I was like okay something doesn't look quite right I couldn't figure it out and I now figured it out that if you have your V's a little bit deeper then it might have looked better but I still like the way that it turned out I just wish that I would have paid attention to the inspiration piece a little bit better but hey it is what it is sometimes not everything comes out perfect um, but I do tape that off again and just make those sides a little bit thicker so if you do make this I do recommend to make the sides thicker and make your V just a little bit deeper once I had that completed, then I just go in with some touch-ups with my white Waverly chalk paint and just tup, tup, <laughs> I just touch up any part that had a little bit of black paint um, that went outside the lines. So I'm going to start doing this on my channel, let you guys what I learned when doing these projects. So make sure your Dollar Tree signs are square. If they're not square, cut them down to B square before putting them together. Your lines should be a little bit thicker and make sure you tape it off with painter's tape to ensure you have nice, crisp, and clean lines. And I made this at $9, you guys. $199 to $9, you can't beat it. There's no questions asked. I would much rather make it than buy it. And although it was outside of my comfort zone, I really do like the way that it turned out. And I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think. Okay, friends, moving on to dupe number two. There's the small was 59 and the large was 79. So this was super duper easy. To start off, I just take two candles or I should say candle holders from Dollar Tree and I lay out my half inch square dowel rod that is linked in my Amazon store in the description box and I just kind of mark where the um, square dowel meets the edges of the candle holder. Once I had that marked, then I take my little mini miter saw and I cut that down and then I mark and I cut down the exact same size of that piece that I just cut. Now these miter shears do work, but because these square dowels are really, really thick and strong, um, it's much, much easier to either cut it with a miter box or your mini saw or even a big saw. Um, but I do the exact same thing that I do for the large candle holder than I do for the small one. So once I had that measured out and both of the pieces cut, then I lay one of the square dowels on top of the other, mark it where it would be kind of like an X, and then I cut those down as well. I also make sure to measure each side to make sure that it is nice and even. Once I had those cut down, then I just take my little mini sanding sponge I believe this is called a zip sander and I just sand down those edges to make sure that they're not going to splinter and they're nice and smooth I then take this self-healing cutting mat from Dollar Tree I lay my longer square dowel rod down and then I glue the edge of the smaller one that we just cut and I put that right in the middle and repeat that on the other side Once I had both of my little X's completed, then I do just lay the candle holder on top of the X. I take another scrap piece of my square dowel and kind of just measure how far up the bottom that I want it to go. And to my liking, I mean, there's no 
specific measurement it's just basically how you like it to look um I didn't really follow the exact picture because I felt that it was a little bit too low for the way that I wanted it to look but if you like it as short as the picture shows then that's totally up to you you can just cut them a little bit shorter but I do go ahead and I cut down four pieces the exact same length and then glue them kind of like parallel onto the sides of this candle holder and I do leave the candle holder um, placed on top of the X while I glue these down to make sure that we have a nice tight fit and then once I have it glued on then I take it off and I make sure that it's nice and evenly pushed down so I do just pull that off and I also kind of pull off any glue strings that may be left behind after gluing these down. So again, once I have both of those finished, then I take that same exact stain that we used in the last project and I stain these pieces. I did use the stain special walnut and if you want these if you want your stain to be a little bit deeper and darker, then just let it sit and soak up into the wood while it dries. But if you want it a little bit lighter, then once you lay your stain down, you can go in with a paper towel, cloth, whatever you have on hand, and just kind of soak up the excess of that stain. And then that was it, you guys. This was really quick and easy. What I learned was that the Half inch dowel rods are much easier to cut with a mini saw, a regular saw, or a miter box. You want to lay the dowel over the dowel and mark it to ensure you're cutting in the right place and use a self-healing cutting mat to line up the pieces so that you can make sure that you have them nice and even. I do have a typo. It's not a fourth inch dowel. It is a half inch dowel. And look at the way these turned out, you guys. This literally took me about 10 to 15 minutes to put together and the price you cannot beat it. Okay friends, dupe number three, theirs was $249 and it's this cute little plant stand that I wanted to put my own spin on. So I start off with these little boxes from Dollar Tree. This is the medium size and I put together three of them with some hot glue two times. So six all together, three at the bottom, three for the top. I then take some large stir sticks that I get from Home Depot for 98 cents a pack and I put them together with a clamp at the top and then I take my square and I just mark out where I'm going to cut so that this sits evenly on the table, ground, wherever you're going to put it and I do kind of show you here that I do cut them opposite if that makes sense. I don't even know how to explain it but for the back part you're going to angle it up and for the front part you're going to angle your cut down. Next I sand all those numbers off and then I stain it with it with the exact same stain that I stained everything else with the special walnut because I wanted all of this stuff to look nice and cohesive. Once I had them stained and they were dry being dry is key, especially when you're using oil-based stain. Then once again, I put them together at the top with some hot glue. Next, I take our little shelves and I have to admit you guys, I put the bottom on first and then like put both sides onto the bottom and then try to put the top on. Definitely put both of your sides on. You want to make sure that it's nice and even with a level. I secure it down with some hot glue and then I go in with the top part, but I will tell you that it's going to be much easier if you put both sides on and then attach the other side piece. But of course, I always do things backwards, but that's the beauty of this. I get to figure all this stuff out and then tell you guys the easiest way to make it. Um, but like I said, I attached both sides, making sure that they were even with a level with some hot glue. And then once I had those 
both of the sides glued down. Then I pull out some wood screws. I drill, I pre-drill holes into these. That way my wood is not going to split. And then I secure both sides with a wood screw. And I do believe they're really, really, or I know that they're pretty short. I got a big pack on Amazon. I will put it in my Amazon store for you guys. Um, but I wanted to make sure that this stays together really nicely. I think that it would have held with hot glue, but I just wanted to be sure and I do I did screw one screw on the top of the back part and one screw at the bottom of the front part if that makes any sense but you can see where I screwed it and then um, because the top of this is not even um, when you go to put the top shelf on I did just take some scrap stir stick I glued it to the front and to the back and this is why when I tell you what I learned I'm gonna say make sure that your stir sticks are identical on each side because then you're just gonna have to put a scrap piece in the back and it's gonna not look as stupid which in the end it didn't because I covered it up with some stain but hey you live and you learn I then took that same exact square dowel that we made our candle holders with after I had glued down the top shelf again making sure that it's even with my little level and screwing the top part in as well then I measure out the dowel for the top I stain that I glue that down and then I also cover up the screw um, the heads of the screws with some of my truffle chalk paint and last but not least, I wanted to make a few little decorations to put in my little plant stand. So I mainly put plants in here, but for this little tiny pitcher, I love this little thing so much. I got it at an antique store and I took this little jar just to kind of fill in one of the shelves. Um, I do just take my little mini chalk couture transfers and I just transfer those little images on with some black chalk paste and I will leave all the chalk couture products that I use in one link in the description box. Feel free to add and subtract from your cart because it'll put all the stuff into your cart but that doesn't mean that you have to get everything. I just like to put it all in one place so that way if anybody is looking for something specific that I used it's all right there and this is the magic of chalk paste if you mess up you can just wipe it off and do it over or like me I kind of went off the side with my chalk paste so I just took a baby wipe and I cleaned that up Okay friends, so what I learned with this project is make sure your stir sticks are identical on both sides. If you're screwing this together, pre-drill your holes to prevent splitting and attach the top and the bottom shelf first and then attach the one side because it's going to make your life 10 times easier. And I made this at 8 you guys that is it eight dollars look how amazing this thing turned out i love it so so much i'm trying to figure out where i'm gonna put it um, but that's always a challenge because i have so much stuff and i don't know if this is my favorite project you guys can let me know in the comments down below which project is your favorite if you haven't subscribed already make sure you click that red subscribe button you don't want to miss any dollar tree moments or any farmhouse diy moments anything really um, i am going to start doing hauls i did one last week so if you guys want to check that out you can find that in my videos and i am just so excited that you guys are here also 
Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Moving on to the next project, I take one of these signs from Dollar Tree. This is the round sign that has kind of like the faux wood and marble look on the front with this family sign and I started by easily pulling up that wording now it's really really thin metal so I didn't want to bend it or break it um, that way I could use it in a future project and then I just took this I get questions on this all the time as well this is the background I have on my desk and it's not contact paper it's actually wrapping paper that I got at Walmart back around Christmas time but I do just mark that or measure out the circle and then I cut it out. I then take my blow dryer, I take that sticker off, and of course there's residue left over. So I just take my sanding sponge and I just sand all of that residue off. I then take my drill and take the hanger off and once again I sand that smooth and then I fill it in with some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. Next, I paint the sides and the back side of this sign with some white Waverly really chalk paint, and I only give the back a distressed coat of paint. I then take some raffia while the sign is drying, and I took six strands, two strands in each, and I braided that all the way down, and this did take three strands braided, and that's for a different part of the project. So once this was was dry I took my disappearing purple glue stick and I glued on the uh, front of the sign and then I just glued that piece of wrapping paper that we just cut out. Next I take this one inch flat reed that I believe I bought from Etsy or Joann's. I can't remember exactly. If I can find a link I'll leave it in the description box because we are going to use this on a different project but I just measured out around the sign how long of a piece I would need and then I take that same quote unquote stain that I made many videos back with just some antique wax some black paint and some water and it's the exact same quote unquote stain that Sophia just used and I stained that piece of reed Next, I just cut the end off of our raffia. I make sure to secure that with some hot glue. That way it doesn't unravel. And then I took this little jar from Dollar Tree. I start by gluing the raffia itself and then placing it down onto the bottle. And then as I wrap this around the first and second layer, I do occasionally hot glue it. That way it stays in place. And I just continue with all my pieces all the way up the bottom of the jar. So that one, that little jar was done. I love that jar so much. I want to do that to all my jars now. <laughs> but anyway, I took this other jar from Dollar Tree. And this was a little yogurt container. So for the jar from Dollar Tree, I just painted with my white Waverly chalk paint right there where it looks like a label would be and then I painted the entire yogurt jar. I always save kind of that kind of stuff just because you never know when you can use it and it went perfectly on this tray so I was glad I was I was glad that I did and once the paint was dry on this little jar from Dollar Tree I do take an N, an O, and a 3 from the rub on transfers once again from Dollar Tree and I just uh, transfer on N03 for like number 3 I don't know why I just always see things that have that on there and I love the way it looks so once I had the rub on transfers on there then I do just take my mini finger sander which is in my Amazon store in the link in the description box and I just uh, sand random spots to make it look old and weathered Next, moving on to this little yogurt jar, I just take some jute, I put a bead of hot glue in the back, I wrap it around the neck about three times, and then I cut it and glue it again. Now, there was a cork in that 
jar that we put the raffia on and I wasn't going to use it but then it fit perfectly in one of those little bud vases from Dollar Tree that usually have the daisies in them so I just stuck it in there and I love the way that it looks so that worked out perfectly um, but then I just go ahead and I glue the reed around the edge of this sign. So I was going to stop there with this white jar and then once I put it on the tray I felt that it was missing a little something so I did just take these eucalyp eucalyptus <laughs> Here we go, you guys. Surprise, surprise. It wouldn't be a video if Melissa did not trip over her words. Um, but I just take these eucalyptus rub-on transfers, once again from Dollar Tree. I just cut some random little picks, and then I transfer those on to that jar. I think that it just gives it that little pop of color that I felt it was needed it was needing and last but not least i took some nautical rope once again from dollar tree and i cut a piece for handles on either side and then i secured those with some hot glue Moving on to our next project, I love making tobacco baskets, you guys, and I knew that for this video, I wanted to make another one because I did just get this reed not too long ago and I have been itching to play with it. So I start by measuring out, I believe I did 16 pieces, um, 22 inches long. Now in order to get reed more pliable or easy to work with, you just want to soak it in some water for five minutes. So that's what I did. I actually had this planner that I was going to use shortly and I figured that it would be perfect. So I did just kind of bunch them up and stick it in the water and then I set a timer for five minutes. Once the timer went off, I took them out on a towel and I just set them on the towel next to me. I then had this sign from Dollar Tree and I laid out seven pieces going long ways and then we're going to do eight pieces going the other way just so that way our tobacco basket is a little bit longer than taller if that makes sense but you start on the end and you go over, under, over, under, and then the next one you're going to go under, over, under, over, and you do that all the way down until you have it as long as you want. Once I had it weaved, then I took a longer piece from the roll and I just started about two away from the corner and I just pinned it. Now when making a tobacco basket, I cannot stress enough that the corner is the most important part because that is gonna make the edges stand up just like a tobacco basket. So once I was pinning these, then I realized that it would probably be much easier if I just stapled these. So that's what I did. I took the pins off one by one and stapled them and then for the rest I continued that all the way around until I got to where the end of the reed met the first part if that makes sense. So once the piece met with the first starting piece for the edge, then that piece, the first piece, I went on the outside. Once it met there, then I just continued the piece all the way on the inside and I glued it down. That way you won't see the staple marks. And once again, I continued that all the way around until it came back to the part where I had already covered it. Thank you. 
Next, I take another piece and I just glue that to the outside once again so that way you cannot see those staple marks. And I also like to do three layers just because it's going to ensure that the edge is nice and strong and sturdy. Next, I just take my scissors and I cut down all the excess pieces. Now, I would recommend to do this before you start layering your edge pieces. So once you get that first part all the way around, I would cut your edges and then continue on with your second and third layer. Now, I always I've always done my tobacco baskets with an X, but I saw these really pretty tobacco baskets. I can't remember where I saw them, and they had this kind of diamond-shaped design, so I knew that next time I made one that I wanted to do this design, so all I did was just cut four pieces, and I kind of tucked them behind the cross pieces. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but you can see what I did and then I hot glued them in place after I trimmed them down so that way you wouldn't see them hanging off. And then I stained them with my ebony stain that has stain and polyurethane. And then once I had a layer of the ebony, then I went in with the Sorry guys, I had to think for a minute what it was called. Um, I then went in with the Barrel Brown. I just wanted it to have some contrast. Um, I don't know if there was any rhyme or reason, but I kind of tested it on the back and I liked them both together rather than like one or the other. So that's why I went with this technique. And of course I had my little helper there helping me, but you can stain this whatever you like. You can leave it the natural color. It's really your preference and totally up to you. Next, I took these jars from Dollar Tree and I just gave them one good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Once they were dry, then I just took my little mini finger sander and I just sanded down those designs on it. I didn't do all four sides because one of the sides you're not going to see it, but if that bothers you, you can do all four sides. I just wanted these jars to look old and weathered, um, just like the tobacco basket, which is why I took some white Waverly chalk paint and I distressed the entire front of the basket. Next, I took some jute on the back of my jar with some hot glue and I just glued um, the jute down and then wrapped it around the neck of the jar about five or six times and I'm going to show you why in a minute. I almost left them plain but then I realized that I was going to hang these on the basket with some jute so it probably would have just blended in or I know that it just blends in much better if I had already um, glued some jute down to the neck and then I kind of laid the jars out to see where I wanted them to hang. I flipped it over, I fed jute through those holes and then flipped it back over. I tied a knot first and then laid my jar down and I tied another knot in the front and then cut the edges and glued down the excess so that it all blended in and I did this for both sides. Last but not least, I took these little fairy lights that I got from Dollar Tree. I put a strand in each of the jars, and then you can add whatever you like. Greenery, you can leave them plain. It's totally up to you. I added cotton and greenery to mine just because that goes with my decor, and I absolutely love the way that this turned out, you guys. It 100% looks store-bought or maybe I'm just being biased, but let me know in the comments down below what you think. Does it look store-bought or does it look handmade? 
For the last project, you guys, I took this 8x10 canvas from Dollar Tree and I started by taking it out of the package and taking all the staples out of the back with my staple pull. Now, I had make, made this exact sign minus the little holder at the bottom a while ago on my channel to go with my farmhouse decor and ever since I made that Sophia has wanted one for her room which is why I was just asking her like what color she wanted to do how she wanted to do it and all that good jazz but I then once I took it out of the canvas then I just sanded down all the rough edges I then just put some ballerina Waverly chalk paint in a little dish that I get from Dollar Tree or container I should say and then Sophia helped me stain this with our ebony stain and we did the frame I did not worry about the back if you're worried about the back then you can stain the back but we were kind of on a time crunch here and by this time I was just ready to be done so that way I could edit and get it up to you or uploaded to you I should say oh my goodness um, and while we set that aside to dry then I just added some water to the pink paint and I let her stir it up now we were going for like a stained look on these obviously she wanted pink like she said a few minutes ago and so I took some large popsicle sticks that I get from Home Depot for 98 cents a pack 30 come in a pack and I let her stain all 10 of those Next, I laid them out to make sure that they all fit in the back, and then I just I just <laughs> secured them all with some hot glue. Next, I went on my computer and I used that same exact font that I used for mine. I asked her if she wanted a different style letter. She said no, she wanted to make it exactly like the other one. So I did just use Algerian and the size was 600 to print off that S. And then we took some Arteza graphite paper and we transferred that on to the sign. Next, she took a black paint pen and just colored all of that in. Then we took this candle holder from Dollar Tree. She cut the tag off and painted it black and then set that aside to dry. Now, by this part in the project, I was on my own. <laughs> <laughs> which is okay she's five she only has a certain a attention span so I had no problem finishing this up for her but I did just distress the edges with some white as well as the candle holder with some white Waverly chalk paint as well and then these were the little white flowers with greenery she was talking about I believe I got these from Walmart you guys I love Walmart's floral I cannot stress that enough but I did just pull them off of the pick I glued them around the S in a wreath shape and then I took some hot glue and secured the bottom of this canvas to the candle holder with some hot glue and then reinforced it in the back with some tumbling tower blocks I'm sure you can hear Isabella out there having a ball she's in the living room right here I can see her <laughs> But look at my baby. She was so happy with her sign. And I am just so thrilled at the way that everything turned out. I had so much fun DIYing with her for this video. I know that she wasn't in all of them. But she's a kid. She doesn't want to DIY for a few days straight. So no harm, no foul. Okay, friends. So I'm just going to put a disclaimer. There's a lot of moving parts to this video, so it is a little bit longer, but let's just get started. So I had this board from a project that has been sitting in my stash. I had already painted it. It is a longer um, of the signs from Dollar Tree. I believe I got it back around Easter. And like I said, I had just painted it with some white Waverly chalk paint and I gave it a distressed coat. 
I then took my monogram transfers from Chalk Couture. I want to show you guys a Cricut is nice but look how amazing and easy it is to use Chalk Couture in like you don't have to weed and you don't have to go through a bunch of stuff. You just fuzz your transfer. Once you have fuzzed it, fuzz it a little bit more and you lay it down, put some paste on it, and then you reveal your project. So I just pulled out the letters for the word farmhouse. Now I thought that I had ordered an F, but apparently I didn't, or I just don't have it, one or the other. So all I did was take the E for the first letter. I covered up that little spot at the bottom where it would make an E, and I just transferred it on and then I took a little bit of chalk paste and some water I mixed it up and that is how you can paint with it so I just ended up putting a little tail on the end of the F and I started with the F and the E I put painters tape at the top and bottom so that I know it was even and then I did the middle letter which I believe was H and then I did the um, letters after the F and then the letters after the H just so that way it could all be nice and even. I then laid that out on a piece of foam board and I cut my piece down to the size that I wanted and then once I had that cut off I had a bunch more of these little metal signs um, uh, all I did was take the hanger off of it and then I unscrewed the little design on the front. Now I always save all my little extras so I save all the screws and all the little designs on the front of the galvanized metal signs and then I move on to my foam board. I take some ink Waverly chalk paint and I just paint the edges as well as right around the frame of this foam board just so that way if any of it was showing then you couldn't see the white. I then started at the bottom of my sign so I glued four of the metal signs down to the bottom and then I glued four of the metal signs to the top. Now with working with these galvanized metal signs I have found that the best way to glue it is to glue on your surface and then lay your sign on top of that. If you try to glue on top of the sign the glue just dries way too fast. I then took my um, lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and filled in all those holes and then once those holes were filled then I took my sterling silver acrylic paint that I got from Walmart and I filled in all those holes. Next, I take my quarter inch square dowels that are linked in my Amazon store in the description box. And I, the, I believe that I used three of these all together. I laid out the bottom piece, measured it, cut it. I then just laid a piece at the top. That way I could get the middle pieces right. And then I took my little mini miter saw and I cut those pieces down to size. After I sanded the edges to my dowels, then I take my Rust-Oleum stain and polyurethane Kona stain and I stain all of my frame pieces. Next, I measure the top and the bottom of my sign and glue that down to the galvanized sign. Once I have that glued down, then I take some Gorilla Contact Adhesive Clear Grip. I put a few dabs on each of the dowel rods, and then I let that set up for two minutes like the direction says, and then I go in in the empty spots with some hot glue and I glue my frame down. Now I like to always start with the top of my frame and then work my way down. That way all of the pieces fit nicely. And then that was it for this project, you guys. Look how amazing this turned out. So high end, yet so easy. And I just love this sign. I'm gonna find a spot for it in my home. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to our next project, I take four of these Happy Easter signs from Dollar Tree and I start by taking the feet off, the eyes and the raffia bow as well as the hangers on all of them. I then measure to see where the middle of this sign is and I mark three marks, one in the middle, one at the bottom and one at the top right in the middle. That way we can kind of do like a score line in the middle to make these look like faux wood. So I do that by taking my Gorilla Mounting Putty onto my quilter's ruler and I just put it on either side. That way when I go to make a score line, it doesn't move all over the place. I lay that down and then like I said, I just score it. I then take the quilter's ruler off and I continue to score, uh, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, you guys. I continue to score it until I get a nice score line. Once I have that score line, then I kind of go right next to that line. I don't want a big gash, but just enough so that way this makes an indentation in the middle. Like I said, we're going for the look of faux wood. Now, if you have a table saw, you can certainly lower down your, your blade and do this but because this sign is so thin I just was not comfortable doing that so once I had both of the little tiny lines um, cut so basically they're going to meet together I then take a, sty a stylus a I don't even know what you want to call that little tool and I just scratch in the middle to make that cut a little bit deeper I didn't want to go too too deep because I didn't want to cut this in half but when I paint this you'll see why I definitely focused on that part um, for a good bit but anyway I then take two of the signs and glue them together with some large popsicle sticks tongue depressors whatever you would like to call them I call them popsicle sticks but that's just me next I go in with my pencil and I just kind of make a mark you can see my eraser marks because I had this like I, I didn't like the way that it looked so it did take me a few tries to just sketch out the shape that I want this and if you haven't guessed it already we're going to be making barn doors but I did want to do something different with my barn doors which is why I wanted to put this little design at the top so once I had the mark where I wanted it all I did was take my utility knife and I just scored along that line once I had it scored probably about five times then I do just kind of bend that part back and here we go you guys I'm showing you that my projects do not go off without hiccups all the time I'm not a perfect crafter and if I mess up I just fix it and I move on so because I had glued all the way to the top I had to flip that over and cut a part of the popsicle stick off and then continue to cut that off so once I had the first one cut and sand it down, then before I started cutting, I got a little smart here. I laid this down. You make sure you want to do the opposite so that way you don't have two, um, one on the front, one on the back. Um, but once I had uh, traced that out, then I go in the back and cut that piece before I cut kind of like the arch off. Next, I take some large stir sticks that I had already cut down from a previous project and I painted them white. I only had three of them, so I, had, I did have to do more, but I put one at the top, one at the bottom, and then two in the middle, kind of making like an M. I marked those where they should be cut so that they meet the top and the bottom part nicely, and then I cut them down. Once I had them cut down, then I still needed to go in, lay them down, and then cut them appropriately so that the middle part would fit together nicely. And the, I mean, you guys, it's so easy. All I did was just lay it down, figure up where it needed to be cut. I just marked it. I don't do any special measurements or anything like that. I just lay it down, mark it, and cut it. 
I highly suggest if you don't have a saw to definitely um, invest in one. You can do so many different things with a saw. I will leave the one that I use in my Amazon store, but you don't have to get that one. Maybe just so you can get an idea. It's very small. It's only seven and a quarter inch, so it's easy to store, but definitely worth the buy. So anyway, sorry i know that was long-winded but um i just take those pieces that i cut as well as my little barn doors and i give them all a distress coat of white waverly chalk paint next i just lay them out and you can see here that i still did not cut them correctly which is no big deal i'm going to show you how to fix that because like i said i'm not a perfect crafter but you just roll with the punches but i glued those pieces down and then once i had them glued down and seen like where the cracks are because i didn't cut them right then all i did was take some wood filler and i just filled in those cracks and this stuff that i use dries so quick i mean by the time i take it out of the container and lay it down probably in about five to ten minutes it's dry which is why i love this stuff so much but once it's dry i just take my little mini finger sander and i sand those down smooth this is also in my amazon store but you can find it at walmart or home depot really any store that sells tools and things like that but i just sand those down smooth i make sure to get into the edges and then i use my vacuum and i vacuum all i vacuum up all the dust next i fill in those sanded areas with my white waverly chalk paint and i am going to show you here in a minute you guys once again, I'm going to reiterate this, that I am not a perfect crafter. I get it wrong all the time, but you guys, if you don't try, you're never going to know if you can do it. But if you mess it up, then just scrap it and do it again. Like I said, it's so fun to learn new things, and I know that you guys can do these projects right along with me. But I take these little hinge stickers. I don't really know what you want to call them. They are puffy stickers from Dollar Tree. And they have all different... Uh, they look like hinges to me. All different sorts of hinges. Um, and I paint those black. And then I... Well, at first I laid it down. And then I was like, wait a minute. We got to distress this. Because I'm putting this up against a white wall, I am going to distress it. I was going to try to not distress anything for my viewers who don't particularly like distressing but when I put it up against my white wall you really couldn't see it but if you see that V right there you guys I glued those pieces on the wrong way so they would not match up when both the doors were together but it's not a big deal you guys all I did was pop them off I filled in the holes sanded it down and then painted it no big deal you really cannot even tell when they're hanging up so i then place my hinge stickers down and i also had these um circle circle drawer pulls per usual your girl can't talk <laughs> it just is what it is um but i hot glued them down on either side like where a handle would be on a barn door I set those aside and I still felt like they were missing a little something so all I did was take some thick nautical rope I measured the uh, like width I guess you want to say of a wreath and then I just glued some greenery down to them and glued them to the middle of each barn door and look how amazing these are you guys I love these barn doors they're different they are farmhousey and tiki I am just so pleased with the way they turned out so per usual let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite Our last project I take two of these decorative boxes from Dollar Tree I did show you guys the um, SKU number if you want to try to look them up because I do know that not everybody's Dollar Tree has the same things but I do want to give you guys that 
um, information in case I get asked in the description box or in the comment section. Good Lord, you guys. <laughs> I take the stickers off with my blow dryer and then I take two uh, hurricanes from, or one is a hurricane, the other one is a vase from Dollar Tree. I take the stickers off of those as well and then I take my Goo Gone from Dollar Tree as well and I take that glue residue off. So once I, I also took the labels off of the decorative boxes and I set those aside. So once I had everything cleaned off, I stand my hurricane and my vase up on top of the box. I should say I flipped it over, put the stuff on top, and then I take those same exact square dowels that I used in our farmhouse sign. I stand them up next to the vase and the hurricane and I mark probably about an inch above that and then I go to my little mini miter saw which is also linked in my Amazon favorites I love this thing you guys it comes in handy so much and I um, put it on a 20 degree angle and then I cut I then just cut the bottom fl uh, like straight and then I measure the other pieces so I did four of like the taller ones and then four of the smaller ones obviously because one is going to be bigger than the other and then I had these scrap pieces laying around from a different project and it just so happened that they fit perfectly on the top of the bottom part so that way I mean obviously they're not going to touch because I'm going to put a top on these anyway but this was the easiest way that I could figure out how to get this to look like a lantern in the design that I had in my head. So once I had all the bottom pieces cut then I take that scrap piece I made like I said it fit perfect so I made sure that it would fit perfectly and then I laid it down on my dowel and marked it and then cut those as well so the bottom pieces are also going to be cut at a 20 degree angle and then the top piece of the top piece if that makes any sense um, I also just cut those at a 20 degree because it's not really going to matter since we're going to cover that up. I hope that made sense. If not, you can slow the video down and you can see what I did again and again. But next, once I had all my pieces cut, then I glue the top piece to the bottom piece with some hot glue. Next, I take my mounting putty and I just put those where I'm going to glue them down. I didn't want to glue them down just yet because we are going to be spray painting the top and the bottom pieces and the way that my mind works is I want to get all the pieces done so that I can paint and spray paint all the pieces at the same time so that way I don't have to wait for the spray paint or paint to dry. So I just hold up a small stir stick to the top of each and I cut those down four pieces. One is going to be three inches and the other is going to be four inches. For two of the pieces, you're going to cut those down an eighth of an inch smaller so that way you have a perfect square. I did not do that. I found out the hard way, but I did want to let you guys know that so that you didn't make the same mistake that I did. So once I had all my pieces cut and glued together, I did glue those together with some hot glue. Then I go back in with another small stir stick. I measured the top pieces and I cut those down as well. For the smaller box, I needed three pieces. For the bigger, for the bigger box, I needed four. And then for the fourth one, I measured and I cut that down with my utility knife. Once I had all those pieces cut down, then I do just glue those to the top with some hot glue. Next, I sand down that residue on these boxes.
I then went in with my Rust-Oleum Hammered Silver Spray Paint and I did spray paint the bottom and the top of our lantern. Once I had those spray painted, then I took three parts antique wax, one part black, and three parts water. I mixed it until it was smooth, just like a stain, and then I quote unquote stained all of our side pieces. While all those pieces were drying, I took my circle cutter and some foam board. I also had these old candle lids laying around in my stash. See, this is why us crafters never throw anything away because you never know what piece or what part of something you're going to need and these ended up working out perfectly for this. So I just kind of measured how big I needed my circle to cover up that wording and I just cut two pieces of foam board in a circle. If it was a little bit too big then I just cut it down with my scissors. I hot glued my foam board into the lid of the candle. Uh, lid and then I painted it with some truffle Waverly chalk paint. Next I take a natural sponge that I get, I think it comes in a pack of five from Walmart. I know that the brand is by Folk Art and I take some elephant Waverly chalk paint. I dab it on the end of my natural sponge and then I just randomly dab all the way around the parts that or the pieces that I spray painted with my hammered spray paint. So basically with this galvanized technique, if you have been around for any amount of time, you know that I love this technique and I usually explain it, but for the new people, once you spray paint or paint anything with the silver, it's a little bit too bright. So the elephant is going to tone that silver down and then you're going to take some white Waverly chalk paint and dab a little bit lighter than you did the elephant and the white is going to make it look like galvanized metal. So if you went if you go a little too crazy with the white like I normally do, then I usually just go back in with my elephant and I tone that white down. I do do that to all four pieces and then once I have all my pieces galvanized, then I screw down our label holders that were already on there, but I do them upside down if that makes sense. So originally they were right side up but because we are using the top of or the bottom of these boxes you want to glue them down the opposite way next i take our candle lids and i glue them down to the middle of each of the boxes with some hot glue obviously i put the smaller one on the smaller box and the larger one on the larger box and then i go in with some hot glue again and i glue down the side pieces to both So once I was done that step, then I went to go put the top piece on and I realized that it was just a little bit too thick for my liking. So if you do this project and you don't like a thicker top, then definitely just cut down your side pieces of the box before you glue it together. But it really was no big deal. These cut down so easily. I only scored it about four times on each on each side and then it popped right off so it really was no big deal to me but I did do that to both of them and then I just painted that bare edge with my sterling silver acrylic paint. I then take some hot glue on the top of those dowel rods. I lay my box out just to make sure that it looked right before I glue it down and then like I said I just glued the top of those dowels and I lay the top on. I do that for both of them once again. 
I then took those circle drawer pulls that we used on the barn doors. I will have them in my Amazon store as well. Anything that you're looking for, if I can link it in my Amazon store, I surely will. So definitely check there first. Um, but I do just glue those to the top middle with some hot glue as well. And you guys, at this point, I was getting so excited because when I first started this project, I was not too sure how it was going to turn out. But once I had it all put together and all there was left to do was to put some faux rust on it and a few other little details... Um, I was just so happy with this already. So I did just go in with some antique Waverly chalk paint or antique wax, I should say, um, by Waverly. And I focus on the edges and then I randomly just put dots all or not dots. I randomly just kind of paint and I didn't want this to look uniformed which is why I just randomly did it. But I have found with this antique wax, if you lay it on thick, let it sit for a minute and then go back and like wipe it down just a little bit with your dry brush, then it really looks like rust. And I think it looks so amazing against this faux galvanized metal. So if you don't like the rust, you can leave that off. It's totally up to you. But I did do that to the bottom and the top of the or the sides and the top of the boxes on the top and the bottom I know that was like a tongue twister but the top of the lantern and the bottom of the lantern I did the same exact thing I should have said <laughs> Once I had my uh, faux rust on there, then I still felt that it was missing just a little something. So once I get once again, I made kind of like a wreath for the bottom of the candles, and I just took my jute once again, or my nautical rope, I should say. I laid it down on the candle, like the edge of it, the candle holder. I keep calling it a candle holder because it is a candle holder now but the candle lid and I just kind of measure that I glue the end together and then I just put some greenery on there with some hot glue and then it didn't want to fit around the bottom of the candle holder so all I did was kind of like shimmy it on so I laid my hurricane in the middle and then I just kind of shimmied it around the bottom until it went up the hurricane a little bit. And then I put it into my lantern and then pushed it down onto the candle lid. And then you guys, literally that was it. I love these projects this week so much. Per usual, I can't pick a favorite. I don't know. It might be these lanterns. It might be the barn doors. <sighs> I hate this decision so you guys know that I don't want to pick but I know you'll let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite which project wowed you this week and I just want to thank you guys so so much for stopping by if nobody has told you today you are absolutely gorgeous you are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul if you haven't clicked that subscribe button you might as well become part of the family you don't want to miss another Dollar Tree farmhouse moment also if you guys would give me a big thumbs up if you enjoy it share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help youtube to notice me just a bit more if you guys made it through this entire video i appreciate you so much let me know down in the comments which type of videos you guys want to see in the future if you guys like certain projects or certain styles let me know i'm always curious to hear I want to thank you guys for being here. Nothing that I do would be possible without you. And I just want you to know how much I love and appreciate you guys. The growth that we have seen on this channel is absolutely phenomenal, especially in the last couple months or couple years, I should say, since I started ketones. So if you guys want any information on ketones or chocotour, how you can save 40% off of everything, text my number on the screen. Until next time, I love y'all so much. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.